Welcome on Healing Today. We are a ministry of Challenge for Christ Ministries, a.k.a. Restoring Destinies Worldwide Crusades, located at 1417 Clifton Street, Raleigh, in North Carolina. Our pastors are Dr. Eric Miguel and Prophetess F. Deborah Pulte. Our mandate is to restore destinies around the globe, one soul, one family, one community, and one nation at the time. We are preaching the gospel of Jesus Christ with the demonstration of the healing power of the Holy Spirit in our lives. As you tune in today, we believe this to be a defining moment, a seizing opportunity for your destiny and that your life shall no longer be the same again. Father, we thank you and we give you praise. We bless your holy name, O oh God, as we coming into Passover. Father, we just want to bless you for your son Jesus who died on the cross for us. We thank you for the blood. We thank you for healing being provided through the blood of Jesus. And somebody say amen on the other side of the screen. This is Healing Today, and I'm Dr. Eric Miguel Poiti. I came tonight in your house to just speak the word of God to you and to let you know that Jesus is about to do great things in your life. And for that, I want us to go to the word of God together today. And like I said, this is Passover 2015. And during this Passover, the Lord is going to do great things in your life. I want to remind you that years ago, Israel was actually in Egypt. And as Israel was in Egypt, what happened is God came and placed 10 plagues upon the Egyptians because they were holding captive the people of God. And I came to let you know today that God is about to come and break whatever was holding you captive, whatever was coming against you, God is about to come and break it through the power of the blood of Jesus, through the power of the sacrifice of his son. So that very night, the Bible says in the book of Exodus that that very night, the people of Israel received instruction from God to put the blood upon the doors so that when the angel will come and pass over all Egypt, the people of Israel, the children of God will be kept safe. And I want you to know the same thing is going to happen today. As you will listen to this message, as you will come in contact with the blood of Jesus and the cross of Christ, God will come and break the power of the enemy over your life. God is going to come and deliver you and save you. Hallelujah. So let's go, like I said, today in the word that we have. So why Jesus died on the cross, like I said? Why is the cross very important? Listen, without the cross, there is no salvation. Without the cross... There is no salvation from sin and there is no uh, uh, deliverance or healing from your disease and from my disease. So that's the reason the cross is very important. The cross has been prophesied before even the Romans brought it actually as an instrument of affliction. So you can see that that instrument was in the heart of God in order to reconcile you and I in order for you to receive your healing provision to Christ Jesus. The Bible says, Isaiah chapter 53, verse 4 to 5. Isaiah 53, verse 4 to 5. I uh, hope you're getting your Bible right now. The Bible says, Surely he has borne our grief, our sicknesses, our weaknesses and distresses, and carried our sorrows and pains. He was wounded for our transgression, he was bruised for our guilt and iniquity, the chastisement needful to obtain peace and well-being for us was upon him, and with his stripes that, that wounded him, we are healed and made whole. Hallelujah. Praise God. My brother, my sister, you can receive your physical healing today through the cross. You can receive your emotional healing today through the cross. Just like that young lady I told you some weeks ago about. She called me from the state of Texas, being depressed from age 13. 
to 20. Now she was 20 years old. That's seven years of depression, chronic depression. But as the Spirit of God encouraged her, and she picked up the phone and called our line, our prayer line, we prayed with her. We declared healing upon her life. And that young lady sent us a testimony because God did heal her. Hallelujah. You too can receive your physical healing. You can receive your emotional healing as well. So I want to encourage you to go through the word with me today. In the name of Jesus. Jesus bore your sicknesses and disease as he went through the pain and agony of the cross. The word presents him as the man of sorrow who is actually also living with pain. Jesus became acquainted with grief and sickness so that we will have healing provision through his redemptive sacrifice. I will always be reminded of how the Lord healed me from epilepsy. I can never forget that. I always tell people, look, the devil came too late. If somebody tells me today that God is not real, I just have to let him know, you know, I was sick. I was epileptic. I had Caesar at age nine. And God, through his son, Jesus Christ, healed me and delivered me when I gave my life to Christ at 14 years old. So I cannot doubt, I cannot doubt the power, the healing power of God. I can never look at somebody who will say, oh, God doesn't exist, I don't have faith. Listen, every morning when you wake up and go and make your breakfast, you make breakfast with a bread that you did not cook from your house. You bought it from any store, but you never checked if that bread was, you know, poisoned, you trust people. So that's faith. When you're driving your car around other drivers, you don't check to make sure they have the license. You just have faith in the system. So you see, there is no man who can say, I don't have faith. For the Bible says that faith was given to us through Christ Jesus. That's what God did for us. So no matter the sickness today, you are encountering. There is a river flowing from the cross. You see, the cross is like a river. And uh, I would say it's like the source. And from that cross flows river of living water. From that cross flows the streams of healing. And so today I want you to know that no matter the sickness, no matter the problem, come on. You need to call somebody. You need to tell them, come on, get on RTN Channel 22, Friday, 8 p.m. For healing today is on, and you're going to get healed. I'm telling you, call somebody. Let them know that you got to get right here to my house because Dr. Eric Miguel Puati is about to pray for people, and the anointing of God is going to touch you. I'm telling you, you will be healed. You who is watching me, you will be healed. I'm telling you. Because tonight, I really feel a special anointing upon this show. I really feel like God wants to do amazing things. He wants to do extraordinary things. As a matter of fact, I mean, the message I, I don't even follow right now. Because I feel the presence of God during this Passover 2015. And he's going to meet you. He's going to heal you. I hear cancer. He's going to heal people with cancer during this show as you will watch it, as you will call somebody and let them hear this message. Someone's going to get healed in the name of Jesus. Praise God. Hallelujah. So I want to talk about something very important when it comes to the cross. I want to talk about the, the, the wounds Jesus was wounded with. You see, according to some biblical scholars, Jesus received seven specific type of wounds. The number seven, each one of us we know, signifies completion. In other words, Jesus' sacrifice on the cross is a finished work. You don't need to add anything to it. You just have to accept it. You just have to receive it. You just have to understand that through the cross, there is your salvation. 
You just have to accept what he did for you. Acknowledge him as your Lord and as your Savior. Because the cross is perfect. You don't need to add anything. Listen, my friend, it's not because of your tithing that you're going to be healed. It's not because of your sowing that you're going to be healed. It's not even because you're going to church that you're going to be healed, as a matter of fact. Now, all those things are good. But the reason of your healing is simply because Jesus paid the price at the cross. He became our Passover. Hallelujah. Praise God. Now, I want to talk specifically today about five wounds that Jesus endured so that you and I will partake to the blessing of being healed, that you and I will completely receive our total deliverance. Five. Why the number five? Because the number five represents the fivefold ministry. In other words, he represents the, the activity of the Holy Spirit through the gifts that he has given to the church so that you and I can be completely delivered. There is somebody right now who needs a word of healing. There is someone right now who needs a word of prophecy. There is somebody right now who needs to receive teaching so that the word that will be taught to you will bring deliverance. And so in the apostolic anointing that God has placed upon my life, I come today in your house in the name of Jesus and I command those demonic powers that have rendered you sick to depart in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. As we'll be talking about the five wounds, five wounds Jesus endured for you. I want you to apply your hands wherever you feeling the pain. I want you to call somebody and tell them, come to my house and listen to this message because God is about to do wonders. Hallelujah. Five wounds. Those, the five wounds. Number one, the first wounds that Jesus endured. He endured the wounds on his back. Let's go in the book of John chapter 19, verse 1. And also the Psalm 129. You can write it down, please. John chapter 19, verse 1 says... So then Pilate took Jesus and flogged, scourged, or whipped him. You see, Jesus was actually wounded on the back. And the Psalm 129 actually prophesied saying this, They afflicted me, the plowers plowed upon my back. Jesus carried our sicknesses, our diseases, our distresses on his back. He was wounded on his back so that we might receive our healing. Hallelujah. Isaiah prophetically declared that by his stripes we are healed. My God, every flogging on his back was done for you so that you will receive healing. For every scourging on his back, there was healing and deliverance for each one that we walk on planet Earth. You see, can you imagine that? As our Lord was being flogged 2,000 years ago, he was thinking about you. He was thinking about me. He was thinking about what will happen to you. In other words, when Christ was dying, was being flogged right there, he, he was thinking about this young lady that was threatened with, by HIV AIDS, and he healed her. When Jesus was being flogged on, the, on his back, he was thinking about me, an African boy, that one day, this African guy will, will have epilepsy and he will need to be healed. And he took it for me. By being flogged on his back, Jesus was caring your distresses, knowing that you're going to be depressed, knowing that you will go through oppression, knowing that you will go through all the depression, and he paid the price for you. My brother, my sister, Jesus had you in his on his mind. 
when he was being flogged. The second wound that Jesus endured was the wounds on his head. John chapter 19 verse 9 verse 2 says, And the soldiers, having twisted together a crown of thorns, put it on his head and threw a purple cloak around him. The crown of thorns on Jesus' head and the purple cloak actually represent a rejection of his royalty by the demonic system of this world. However, the, those wounds on his head, they show God's determination to heal us totally. In other words, those wounds on his head signify that from the crown of your head, <laughs> to the sole of your feet, my God, my God, God has provided for you to be healed. Now, are you suffering anywhere in your head? I remember that woman who called us because she was having a tumor in her brain. And because of that, the tumor in her brain, she called us for prayer. As my wife and I joined together in prayer and declared the word of God upon that lady. Sometimes later she went to the doctors and guess what? The tumor on the brain was completely gone. It disappeared totally. Why? Because by the wounds of Jesus Christ, as they put that crown on his head, Jesus took care of any kind of sickness or disease that can start in your head, on your head or in your head or in your brain even. Hallelujah. And the clock symbolizes a complete cover from the crown of his head, like I said, to the sole of his feet. You, he carried your sicknesses and so therefore you are healed. My God, I thank you. Lord, I give you praise. There is somebody watching right now and you are wondering if whatever I'm saying is the truth. You're asking yourself, is this pastor really telling the truth? Let me tell you one thing. Whatever I'm saying right now, it's not just something I get from the Bible. Like I always tell people, I believe in healing. And the reason I believe in the power of God to heal you, it's simply because I was sick myself and God healed me. It's simply because when I met my wife, she couldn't have children. Medically, it was proven that she will never have child. She will never bear a child. But sometimes later, as we got married, I told her before we even got married that God gave me the names of my children. And because of that, I believed we will have children. God has blessed us with three wonderful, three beautiful kids. So I want you to know that even though you, you may doubting right now, you may be doubting right now, God wants to reach out to you. He wants to touch you. Just believe, only believe, hallelujah. Now the third wound that we're going to is the wounds on his face. The Bible says in the book of Isaiah, chapter 50, verse 6, I gave my back to the smiters and my cheeks to them that plucked off the hair. I hid not my face from shame and spitting. Wow. Can you, do you hear that? Do you really hear this? I mean, come on, somebody. I'm going to read this again. He said, I gave, Jesus said, I gave my back to the smiters and my cheeks to them that plucked off the hair. The hair. I hid not my face from shame and spitting. Wow. What a wonderful God. What a loving Savior. He did not hide himself from sufferings so that you and I will have provision of healing. He did not hide people from spitting on his face so that you and I will no longer walk with shame, so that you and I will no longer 
look around and wonder, oh God, how am I going to do with this? Because I've been just diagnosed diagnosed with this kind of sickness. I just received from this report from the doctors. I, I just got six months to leave now. How in the world is gonna, I'm gonna do what will happen to my family, what will happen to my, my kids. No, God sent his whole only son to die on the cross for you, to give his face so that people will spite on it. And as they will do so, shame will no longer become your portion. Oh, I hear God saying right now, you will not be put to shame. I hear the Spirit of God saying that somebody has been crying for too long and he is telling you today, you will not be put to shame, but God will prompt your deliverance. Hallelujah. He will prompt your deliverance in the name of Jesus. Praise God. We should never doubt the love of our God and Savior. You should never doubt the love of the Almighty One as He sent His Son. I mean, what else, what other proof do you want from God? Jesus Christ died on the cross for you. Listen, I hear people talking about uh, 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 how many, you know, other religious leaders. And I'm not trying right now to bring any kind of conflict or fight on it. But I just want you to understand this. None of other religious leaders died on the cross for you. Nobody else died on the cross for you. Remember, when I was sick, I have to remind myself that it wasn't my mom who died for me, though she loved me dearly, but that woman couldn't die for me. She couldn't take away the, 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 the epileptic disease, the, she, the seizures that I was going through, though she loved me so much, but she couldn't take it away from me. Why? Because she was limited. But God, in his love, sent his begotten son. And as Jesus God died on the cross, as Jesus was wounded on his face, as Jesus took the shame upon him, I received deliverance. I received healing. And you can do the same today. Hallelujah. Another wound is actually was the wounds on his hands and his feet. His hands and his feet. Wow, precious wounds. The Bible says in the book of Psalm 22 verse 16, For dogs have surrendered me. The congregation of the wicked has enclosed me. They pierced my hand and my feet. The cross was a very confrontational place. It was actually the meeting of all demonic spirits coming against the master. Satan, that very day when Jesus was on the cross, Satan called all the demons from all over the earth and beyond. They all gathered in Jerusalem for the kill. And the Lord told me, when I was receiving this revelation, that's the reason there was darkness all over the place. Satan and all his armies surrendered the prince of life to finish him off. Ha! Huh. The psalmist prophesied, and he saw it in the Psalm 22. David saw it. He said, for dogs have surrendered me. He was talking about Jesus. Dogs represent demonic spirits. They surrendered Christ. They were about to kill him, to destroy him completely. They thought, this is it, we got him. But what a wonderful God, because through the wounds of Jesus on his hands and on his feet, the Bible also prophesied through Zechariah chapter 12, verse 10. The Bible says, and I will pour on the house of David and on the inhabitants of Jerusalem, the spirit of grace and supplication. 
then they will look on me whom they have pierced. Praise God. He was pierced so that God will pour upon us the spirit of grace and prayer and intercession. Isn't that powerful? Grace and intercession are coming from the pierced hands and feet of Jesus. You can access that grace. You can access your healing because he was pierced and he was wounded. The last wounds. He was wounded on his side. John chapter 19, verse 33 to 34. The Bible says, but when they came to Jesus and they saw that he was already dead, they did not break his legs. But one of the soldiers pierced his side with a spear and immediately blood and water came out. My dear brothers and sisters, today those five wounds, they're still at work, especially on this Passover. So I want you today, if you haven't accepted Christ Jesus as your Lord and Savior, I want you to connect with him right now, right here. And if you are sick, I want you to give us a call. I want you to come and pray with us. I want you to visit us one Sunday, 11 a.m. That's a great service. You will be touched. You will be healed. You will be delivered. This is Dr. Eric Miguel Puetti with healing today, reminding you that even on this Passover, through the blood, through the wounds of Jesus Christ, your healing is still for today. God bless you. Thank you for watching this show. If you've been blessed by it, please contact us. For those who would like to partner with us, visit our website, 